he make a joyful noise unto the Lord this morning, okay? Because he said he isn't, you know, all prepared with all of the hymns. So what that means is you all have to sing as joyfully loud and boisterous as you can, okay? Imagine that it's like Reformation Sunday and it's like um, somebody's birthday and like it's all wrapped up into one. And so just put all that enthusiasm, okay? Because we Lutherans, we can sing, all right? And it's not like we don't know how to sing, um, um, but uh, we, can, we can sing and we can do it well. So I'm encouraging everyone this morning. And uh, so let's just uh, uh, support David in, in his playing this morning, all right? Is everyone with me on that Okay. <laughs> Nadra, yeah, okay, good, good. See, I knew, I knew it would work. So we're gonna, we're gonna be just fine. It's gonna be a beautiful service, uh, and we're gonna receive from God this morning all that He wants to give us. So uh, um, let's begin with our opening song then. Thank you. 
Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you see the for our readings? Morning. Morning. The Old Testament reading is from Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up its, to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the soldier. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your neighbor in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the son of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it, and understood the grace of God and truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and he has made known to us your love and the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you have strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience and joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise and pray for the gospel lesson. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Behold, the lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The lawyer answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him pass, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, he came to the place and saw the man pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn to, to take care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? The lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated as we continue with our next song. So 
Okay, and I, and I, I agree, but I said, but I said, but really though, the, the, this, the Bible isn't just a rule book. I said, if we only look at it as a list of rules that God tells us to do, then we are missing the, the, the greatest point and purpose and, and uh, focus of what this, this Bible is all about, which of course is Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, there's rules in there. But there's like a lot more gospel in there than you can imagine. So, uh, but today I want us to look just at just a few verses at, at each of the readings. Okay, um, one of the things I was kind of thinking about when I was putting our this message today together is that you know all the readings fit with the Sunday, and they all generally it's obvious, not always, even for a pastor, it's not always obvious. People who put the lectionary together and think, wow, there's. Three readings, two of them are very obvious. Where that third one, they just grabbed something is what it looked like. But anyway, so first of all, let's look at the Leviticus passage here. Just a couple verses. Uh, Leviticus 19, 11 to 12, 17 to 18. Okay, Leviticus 19, 11 to 12. Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name, and so proclaim the name of the Lord your God. I am the Lord. Jump down to 17. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so that you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one another of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And I remember some years back, actually, was, I, was in, it, I was reading this part for some reason in, in confirmation then that we were just talking about uh, one of the kids. It doesn't say you're supposed to lie in, in the Bible. And I said, it sure does. And I pulled it open, and then they're, you know, they were like, oh, I didn't know that was in there. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. All right, but the last verse here of eight, no, Leviticus 19, verse uh, 18, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one another, the last part, but love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. That's the summary. That, that last verse is the summary of the second greatest commandment. Two greatest commandments. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself, okay? And this Leviticus 19, verse 18, is the summary of that second greatest commandment, okay? And so when we look at, um, we can look at our gospel lesson today, and we can, see this, this, we can see this verse 18 carried out, the second greatest commandment carried out. So if you're, if you're there, if you're not, that's fine, but keep your finger there in Leviticus, but open up to Luke chapter 10, you know, it's on page 735, and uh, we're going to look at a couple of verses here. Um, from uh, this, uh, this uh, event of the parable of the Good Samaritan. All right. So we know, I'm not going to read the whole, whole event, but we know that uh, there's, a, there's a priest and Levite, and Scripture doesn't tell us why that is, and that's a whole other sermon to discuss and Bible study to discuss about why they didn't stop, okay? But they didn't, okay? But we know that this non-Jew, a Samaritan, remember he's not Jewish, Samaritans were considered, uh, according to that time were considered half Jews because they weren't full Jewish of full Jewish blood. So this Samaritan, then they lived not you know kind of in the next next town, if you will. Jews lived here, Samaritans lived here, and so this Samaritan's passing through this area. And and uh, what we know from other commentaries is you know sometimes traveling on certain roads uh, like it is today was was precarious and not easy. Well. This Jewish man was traveling through here. He got beaten, and uh, they robbed him, and they stripped him, and they left him half dead, it says. The, the priest and Levite, for whatever reason, don't stop, okay? But the Samaritan does, okay? He stops, and he, uh, um, well, let's pick that up here. So in verse, uh, let's see, where are Verse 33. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let me find my place. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the, where the Jewish man was, and when the Samaritan man saw the Jewish man, he took pity. He went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Jesus then asked the lawyer, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert of the law said, the one who had shown mercy shown him mercy. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. So we see the, the key point that, that we're kind of trying to, to look at today is when we thought about the Leviticus passage that says you love your neighbor as yourself, that's what the Samaritan man is doing here, okay? He's loving his neighbor as himself, even though his neighbor is a non-Jew, is a Jewish man, he's not the same ethnicity, 
and uh, historically Jews and Samaritans hated each other, okay? So we've got two ethnic groups, uh, two people in two different ethnic groups that gather together, they're meeting on this road, and the Samaritan helps the Jewish man. And then, the, but the, the Jewish, uh, Jesus then is telling this story this, uh, to this lawyer, which means a person who knows the law of the God, okay? That's what that, when we talk about lawyer, he's a lawyer, he knows the laws of, of, of the scriptures. So he tells this lawyer, well, who, you know, who do you think shows, uh, was a neighbor? And he said, the one who showed mercy. And the key there is mercy, okay? Jesus is saying that, uh, and then he says to the lawyer and those around him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Now, simple, and it's a simple, easy command, but, you know, I'm probably not the most easiest for any of us to do. Go and do likewise. You know, you think, well, I don't know if I can go and do likewise, or maybe I don't want to go do likewise. Maybe I don't want to show mercy to somebody. And I've, you know, I was thinking about this more. It's just even this morning, it's like, you know, unfortunately, we, we, don't, we don't sometimes want to show mercy because we think that person doesn't deserve to, to receive mercy. You know, and then, of course, immediately I think, well, who am I? Who are you to, to make that judgment call of who deserves mercy, who doesn't deserve mercy? If, if, if we know this is true, that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory, that we were all born into sin, so then who of us is worthy to, you know, in God's eyes, none of us are worthy to receive mercy. But we do because God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You're able, we're able to then go and do likewise to show mercy because God has, has shown us mercy. We don't deserve it. And so that's when it comes down to when we follow that second greatest commandment that the Samaritan is, is carrying out here by, by doing what Jesus asks us to love your neighbor as yourself, even if, you know, even if you don't like your neighbor, you don't want to, I don't think my neighbor deserves it. Well, that's not your judgment call to make. You know, as believers in Christ, as followers of Jesus, we're, we're called to move forward and to show mercy to those who maybe we don't think deserve it. Because again, it's not a matter of what you or I think, but it's what God thinks and what God knows and what he's done in your life. God has, has, has called you and I out of darkness given us and given us life in, in his kingdom through, his, through, the, through the shed blood of Jesus and then we, we go and do likewise. We go and we love our neighbors as ourselves, even if, we, even if we don't want to, even if it's really hard. And you just pray. Pray, God, help me. First of all, help me, God. Maybe I need a, a heart attitude, a, 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 an attitude change. Help me to change my heart and attitude towards somebody who I, you know, you're calling me to show mercy to. And then God will help you to do that. You know, when we, when we want to live the way God wants us to live, you know, that's, that's what God desires of us, to live the way he wants us to live, to love him above all in every situation. That's what the first commandment in the, in the catechism says. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. All things, everything. Okay. I think our problem, though, is we always be like, well, but there's this one thing where I have, to, I have to manage it myself because God can't manage it, or this one little area that I need to control because I sure don't need God controlling it. No, we need to fear, love, and trust in God above all things, everything. So we can, we can do what Jesus tells the, um, the lawyer. We can go and do likewise. When we, for example, we, we do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In Romans, he, Paul talks about that. And, you know, and I think in this day and age, it's, that's so important that we, that we work and we, we pray for God to help us to be the witness around us to, to, to anybody that needs to, to see the light of Christ in our lives, Okay. Being, you know, slapping somebody, and if somebody slaps you in the face, you know, retaliating that way or verbally or on in social media or whatever is, is, is that's, it's pointless, okay? That's not going to get us anywhere. That's not overcoming evil with good. That's saying, well, uh, you deserve it, so I'm going to punch you in the face too. 
I, that's not at all what, uh, what the scriptures are teaching us. Just because you have a, a beef with a neighbor or a friend or a coworker or a family member doesn't mean that you need to respond in the same way. We need to show mercy. And we get that because Jesus has given us mercy. He, has, he was merciful to us when we were yet sinners, when we despised God, when we hated God, when we didn't want to be around God. And he loved us when we didn't deserve it. I mean, that's amazing to me. That God would still look on us, he'd still look on me, he would still look on you, and he'd say, these are my children, in spite of what we have done. And that's why, that's why we, can, we can know for a fact that God forgives us when we confess our sins, receive God's gracious forgiveness, that we can, we can go forward and, and be the witness Christ has given us, uh, made us to be to be that witness so that we can show mercy to someone. You know, every time I'm out and about, and I think like there's a million times I'm, I'm encountering people, whether it's, you know, uh, go down here to Lee Manor to visit Walt recently this last week, and, you know, and I don't, I don't, I've never been there before, and I don't know anybody, and, you know, I go in, and, and I just, you know, I mean, I'm not like in a bad mood when I go to visit, but you know, I don't know what, what kind of day these people have had, so why don't I just try to be a little extra kind to people? I could see they're kind of busy and harried and frustrated a little bit, and you know, and here comes some Yahoo off the street, who knows who he is, and why is he bothering to ask me a question? And so I, okay, then they help me, and I go upstairs to the next floor, and, and uh, I, got, I couldn't remember, and well, anyway, I got a little lost, but I stopped at the nurse's station there, and and they, you know, they seemed a little flustered and a little frustrated. And I thought, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not in a big hurry. I'm not going to be here to, to be frustrating to, to these people because they already need to be, you know, they're already frustrated. So I'm just trying to help lighten the mood a little bit and try to say kind, positive things to them, okay? I don't have to do that. I mean, I could have been cranky and mean to them too. But, but what's that going to do? That's not showing mercy to anybody, Okay. Because again, I don't know what kind of day those people have had, and just because they, I've caught them at a frustrating moment in their life doesn't mean that I need to respond the same way. God is gracious and merciful to us, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. He loves us more than we can ever imagine because he desires that we, that we be with him first and foremost, that we come to him, we confess our sins, receive God's forgiveness, and then be reminded daily and weekly of what he has done for us, what Jesus has done for you and for me and for all people, given us that new life that we deserve. So, that, so then when I'm there, you know, stand at the nurse's station and, you know, they seem a little frustrated and they're kind of harried and whatever. And, okay, I'll just, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try to be kind and, and, uh, um, and gracious to them because why not? You know, there's no sense in retaliating and saying, well, by golly, get your act together, you lazy whatever. And no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to just try to show them grace and mercy because it's, you know, it's not a evil. Sit there, visit with Walt and nurses come in and they always want to, in my mind, they always want to bother us while we're trying to visit, but whatever. Okay. But they're just doing their job and I'm, and I'm, I'm there to visit and I want to visit. I enjoyed my visit with uh, Walt and Fran. It was, it was, you know, it was really fun. And I don't, but I don't need to be angry and upset at the nurses when they come in. And, and that's just one scenario, okay? You can think of a million, I'm sure, in your own lives where you have the opportunity to show mercy and grace to somebody because God's already shown grace and mercy to you. And God wants us to pour that out. You know, we, and I've said this before, but Jesus, you know, we, he wants us to fill up with him to overflowing so that we're a, we're a fount of, of living water that then pours out around us so that others around us will see something. They'll see something different. And then, you know, maybe if they're having a frustrating day or upsetting day, maybe that, you know, that moment when you walk through and you smile and talk, you know, say something kind or whatever to them, and, and they, you know, maybe that just made their day right there. I, I've heard stories like that all the time. It was just a simple thing. They were in line at the grocery store and, you know, long line, and it seemed like it was taking forever. But you know, the person in front of you maybe was really just having a rough day, you know, and, but you know, because you were standing there and you were chit-chatting and just trying to be kind and polite in a, in a genuine way, and you know, and that, you don't know how that will affect that person, but likely it affected that person positively. They went home and 
Maybe they got out of their car and felt a lot better because they, were, they, uh, they just met a nice person in line and uh, uh, whatever that might be. That's, that's, those, are, those are the examples that God gives us, the opportunities God gives us to show mercy and grace to those around us. Because when we, when we do that, when we live that way, then our, apart from our epistle lesson from Colossians, it reminds us that we will be strengthened with all power according to God's glorious might. For all endurance and patience with joy, we will be able to give thanks to God our Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, found in the one true faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, he God of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and it was made man and it was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge all the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, we confess that apart from Christ we have no righteousness. Yet we rejoice that because your son, John, died and rose for us, you promise that our righteousness exceeds even that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Because we know that we, that the hope you, that you have laid upon us, uh, for us in heaven rather, let others see in us confident faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, grant us faithful pastors, dear Lord, who receive your word with thanksgiving and deliver it to us without fear, even when wolves threaten to devour them. Those who trust in the Lord that their labor is truly not in vain. We therefore lift up to you our uh, uh, Pastor uh, Matt Harrison, our LCMS president, Pastor Alan Buss, our Northern Illinois district president, Pastor Carl Fay, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in our area. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for our local church leaders. We pray for our board of evangelism. Send your spirit to equip and encourage them with your word. Lead these men and women with your holy words so that they will make decisions that will glorify you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father in heaven, you grant the length of days to many in our families and communities. You bless us with their wisdom and grant us the opportunity to live out your love for them. Help us to rightly treasure them and as they grow in weakness and need, deepen their trust in your strength and bear your power. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father in heaven, you have granted us to live in a nation where your people may still gather without fear. We pray for our leaders that you would grant them wisdom and that you would uh, guard them from ungodliness. We therefore lift up to you President Biden, Vice President Harris, Illinois Governor Pritzker, Des Plaines Mayor Goskowski. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Pray for those serving in our city in the various services, including the police, the fire department, and the ambulance service. Grant these men and women strength and stamina that they need each day where they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for our members uh, who are homebound and for those who are unable to gather with us in person, but we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that they can worship at home. We pray also, Lord, for our members who are struggling uh, with their health and well-being, including uh, Ken Markworth, 
Donna Pazelli, Walter Krauss, Marlene Johnson, Eric Bobcub, Beverly Williams Melton, Lillian O'Donnell, Jack Shannon, Bill and Vicki, uh, let's see, uh, Jack Shannon and Bob Connor, along with Phil and Susan Shemke. Continue to strengthen these folks and heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, and thank you for birthdays today, including Bar uh, Beth Barkle, um, Karen Hagen, uh, Katie Spiro, uh, Barry uh, Scheftel, and Walter Krauss, and Renee Adam. We also thank and praise you for uh, 24 years that you have granted of marriage to Carol and Jeff Scholler. Continue to strengthen these folks, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, and thank you for the opportunity you've given us to gather in your house and to receive from you all that you want to receive. Give to us. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen each one of us in this receiving of your body and blood and holy communion. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I pray that your spirit would lead and guide each one of us to, to um, want to know you more, to want to read and listen to your word daily so that we can get filled up with you so that more people around us will see something different in us and will want to give you glory. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not to temptation. 